May these words that I speak be grounded in my soul, encouraged by the God presence in me. And may these words that you hear be captured by your soul, enlivened by the God presence in you. Amen. Amen. What role did Jesus play in the evolution of our species and the universe as a whole? I personally think he was one of those meteoric moments. Not unlike the meteor that ended the dinosaur's reign some 65 million years ago. This is not to say that he caused worldwide cataclysmic destruction. But in a miraculously short time, less than three years, he would usher in a new way of being in the world. Unfortunately, unlike the meteor that destroyed the dinosaurs, Jesus' impact only shook us up a little and allowed our dinosaur mentality to return within a few generations after his death. So what was his role in evolutionary terms? First, he witnessed and understood the natural wisdom in creation. He was awed by the way seeds became plants all on their own. They had a built-in wisdom for how to live and how to adapt in the world. <clears throat> he saw in this that all creation was one connected bo body. And he realized that fully 1,800 years before science would understand and confirm it. Second, Jesus witnessed and lamented the incredible lack of wisdom in places of political, economic, and religious power. He saw the overwhelming disregard for life, human and other than human, in the thirst for power and control. Although he wouldn't use this term, because it hadn't been invented yet, he experienced this greed and fear-driven order as against the way of God, an unfortunate devolution of humanity that was negatively impacting creation as a whole. And finally, he embodied the deep wisdom of the universe, the wisdom named in the Old Testament as having been part of the God presence even before the universe began. Jesus knew without a doubt that love is the expression of God and that the kingdom of God will only be achieved through compassion for each other and for all of creation. This was a meteoric moment. And it was that, I believe, because it had the potential to usher in a new way, a deeper way, a more love-centered way of being human in the world. Although many others before Jesus no doubt knew this reality of love to be true, it was Jesus' willingness to live it, his deep commitment to love that caused cataclysmic repercussions. His deep love gave him the ability to heal like we had never seen before and a genuine compassion for anyone he met regardless of who they were it it caused people to change to evolve often immediately jesus initiated the possibility of significant human evolution from a spiritual life rooted in obedience to a spiritual life rooted in love. It would seem, however, that he would have needed to live a thousand years to make it really take hold. By the time Christianity became a religion and an institution, less than 300 years after his death, the spiritual life and the way of Jesus had, that Jesus had instigated would devolve back into a system of rules and laws once again. 
rooted in obedience. Of course, there have been many more evolved spiritual beings, even some orders throughout the last 2,000 years, but they have continually been marginalized, exiled, even killed by religious institution, and almost always in the name of Jesus. With the institutionalizing of the way of Jesus into the Christian church, Jesus had to be changed. He had to be changed from the lowly, self-giving, peasant servant that he was into a king or lord. Richard Rohr offers this reflection. We will continually misinterpret and misuse Jesus if we don't first participate in the circle dance of mutuality and communion with God within which he participated. We instead will make Jesus into Christ the King, a title which he rejected in his lifetime. And we will operate as if God's interest in creation and humanity only began 2,000 years ago. Did the first 14 billion years mean nothing? Rohr goes on to say, humans are more comfortable with a divine monarch at the top of a pyramidal reality. So we quickly made Jesus into an imperial God. This is not the naked, self-emptying Jesus on the cross. This is not the vulnerable, relational, relational one who knows how to be a brother to all of creation. And we no longer knew Jesus in any meaningful sense that the soul could naturally relate to. For Rohr, spiritual power is circular, not hierarchical. He says, it's here, it's, it's within us, it's shared and shareable. It's already entirely for us and grounded within us. The God Spirit is planted within each of us and operating as each of us. Jesus knew this. And he knew this not because he was any more divine than the rest of us, but rather because he more deeply embraced the God Spirit planted within him as him. As a brother to all humanity and all creation, he lived with deep, deep evolutionary integrity. He knew intuitively what we now know to be reality, that relationship is the way of the universe, the experience and the expression of God. This ancient wisdom, older than the universe itself, brought the way of love to life in Jesus of Nazareth. There is no doubt that despite considerable effort to thwart the way of love, both within and beyond Christianity, humanity itself has evolved to a more compassionate form of being with each successive generation. We know that as fact. Despite the news of war and disruption, the reality is we are more compassionate as a species than we were 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago. We are on the right path. Jesus' way outside the restrictions of the Christian faith has the potential to expand love and compassion for all humans, for all of life. And I take you back to our song this morning, Who is My Mother? If we, if we understand that song as all those who believe in Jesus Christ, we've missed the point. The song is about all those who gather in the, in the spirit of Jesus, in the same way, in the way of love. And that has no religious boundary, no cultural boundary, boundary no racial boundary, certainly no political boundary. Jesus' way of being in the world still has the potential to become a meteoric event in human evolution. 
Just imagine if we could actually live what we know to be true, to center our lives, to center our religions, our economies, our politics, our cultural systems, and our institutions in love. This way of love that existed before the universe came into being, this way of love made manifest in one simple peasant named Jesus from Nazareth, is the way of love that will continue to evolve all of creation, with or without us. May we open our minds and our hearts to embrace Jesus, not as Christ the King at the top of a pyramid, but rather as the center of one great circle of love. Our wisdom teacher. Amen.